Okay, hello everyone. This is 5.1 Momentum and Impulse. So, momentum is a new concept. It's really cool and it does a lot of really good stuff. Um, so, linear momentum is a measure. It's a measure of motion that is conserved conserved in collisions. A measure of motion that is conserved in collisions. And we use the letter lowercase p for this. And it's equal to mass times velocity. It has units of kilograms meter per second because it's mass times velocity. Okay, so it's a measure of motion that is conserved in collisions. Um, so this becomes really useful for looking at any time that, that two things hit each other, um, or even just when a single object is moving. Um, it's, it's a useful measure to look at. So we're going to do these problems here. Calculate the momentum of a 2.5 kilogram rabbit traveling with a velocity of 2.0 meter per second east. Well, we've got P equals MV, and we've got 2.5 times 2.0, and this gives us 5.0, um, and we've got kilograms meter per second, again in the same direction, east. Okay, and we'll do that again for the next guy here. This is a groundhog, so he's heavier, but he's moving slower. So mass times velocity, we have 5 kilograms now, times 1.0 meter per second, gives us Again, 5.0 kilogram meter per second east. Oh, in this case, actually, he's going south. My mistake. Okay. So you can see they have the same momentum, different directions, but they have the same momentum even though they have different weights. Now, the next question says, compare the momentum and kinetic energies of these two, of the rabbit and the groundhog. So for the rabbit, we already found that the momentum was equal to 5.0 um, kilogram, oops, kilogram meter per second east. And we'll compare that to its kinetic energy. So EK equals one half mv squared. So we've got one half times the mass was 2.5. And we had 2.0. We'll square that. So we get one half times two and a half times four. Um, so we get uh, 5.0 joules. Okay, so it looks like that has the same momentum and kinetic energy, which is interesting. Maybe that's just always true. Let's see if that's true for the groundhog. Maybe you can be thinking right now about whether that's going to be true. So we had the momentum again was 5.0. And our, we'll do our kinetic energy. 1 half mv squared, and we'll plug in our mass of 5, and our v is 1 squared, and if you go ahead and do that math, you'll see that you only get 2.5 joules. So, no, the kinetic energy and the momentum are not always the same. In this case, we had momentums both of 5 kilogram meter per second, and in one case, the kinetic energy was 5 joules, the other one, 2.5 joules. You see that they vary differently. And kinetic energy is especially, it's a lot more influenced by speed. So the larger the speed is for kinetic energy, the more um, energy you'll get. Whereas momentum, it's equally weighted for mass and, and speed. Okay, so that's just a comparison of these two measures. You haven't really seen why momentum's useful yet, but we will. We will mostly in the, the next section. For now, you'll just have to trust me that it's a useful measure. Okay. Um, impulse. Impulse is just a measure of the change in momentum. Sort of like displacement was our change in position. So here we have delta P, like this. This is our, our impulse. And well, that's going to equal mvf minus mvi. We can actually write that as mvf minus vi, like this. 
but it's also inter um, it equal to another very useful measure, which is f times delta t. Okay, and there's a derivation in your textbook that shows how we get that. You'll see that it comes out to the same units. Um, but often when we talk about impulse, it technically has the same units as momentum, because it's the, just the change in momentum. But we can also write it as Newton seconds. You can see that Newton seconds is the same as kilogram meter per second, um, but it's sort of another way of looking at this measure. So let's take a look at a couple impulse questions here. Um, so our first one, it says a 0 0.16 kilogram puck is traveling at 5 meters per second north. A slap shot produces a collision that lasts for 0 0.002 seconds and gives the puck a velocity of 40 meters per second south. We want to calculate the impulse imparted by the hockey stick. Okay, so hockey, cool. Um, so we'll see what the impulse is for this guy. Uh, we'll use our first statement for impulse. So delta P is equal to M V F minus vi, and we have all those measures. We have the mass, the mass is 0 0.160, and we've got the final velocity, um, the final velocity is 40 meter per second south, and I'm going to be subtracting 5 meters per second north. Well, if I subtract 5 meters per second north, that's the same as adding 5 meter per second south. So this gives me um, 0 0.160 times 45, which gives me a final value of 7.2 newtons, newton seconds. Newton seconds, and again, this is in our south direction. So that's our impulse. And then we can use the other definition of impulse, the F delta, D, delta T, to find the average force. So we know that impulse is equal to F delta T. Um, well, and we, we just calculated that it's equal to 7.2 newton seconds south. So that means that our force is going to equal our impulse over delta T. And we were told in the problem that um, this all happens over a time of 0 0.002 seconds. So I'm going to do 7.2 over 0 0.002, and this will give us a force of, um, one second here, it'll give us a force of 3,600 newtons south. And there you go. That's the average force applied by the stick. And you see that, again, this was something that would be difficult to do if we didn't know what we know about impulse and momentum. Okay, um, so we'll take a look at volleyball now. It says a volleyball player starts to serve by throwing the ball vertically upward. The 260 gram volleyball comes to rest at its maximum height. Uh, the server then hits it and exerts an average horizontal force of magnitude 6.5 newtons on the ball. So if you've ever played uh, volleyball, this person is throwing it up in the air and then spiking it. Um, so we want to determine the speed of the ball after the player hits it if the average force is exerted on the ball for 615 milliseconds. Okay, so we've got a few things going on here. Um, we know we want to find our impulse. Um, well, ultimately, we want to find the average speed of the ball. Um, but we can use impulse for this. Okay, so we can use our two definitions for impulse. Um, let's just get them on the page here first. We've got impulse is equal to mvf minus vi. And we also have that impulse is equal to f delta t. And what we want to do is we want to find the final speed. We know that the initial speed is, um, is equal to Sorry, we know that the initial speed is equal to zero, so we can, um, we can rearrange this to solve for a final speed. So we have um, Vf minus Vi is equal to F delta T over M. So then we can find that Vf here is equal to F delta T over M plus Vi 
which we've set is equal to zero. So now we can plug in all of our values. We know that the, um, the average force is six and a half newtons. So we have six and a half times our delta t, which is 615 milliseconds, so 0 0.615 seconds. And um, we divide that by the mass, the mass of the volleyball, 0 0.260, plus our initial speed there. And this gives us a um, final speed of 15 meters per second. There we go. Now it says on the next serve, the volleyball player hits the ball with the same amount of horizontal force, but the time interval is 875 milliseconds. Now we want to determine the speed of the ball again. Well, it's the um, exact same situation, but we can just replace that, that number in there. So we have VF is equal to F delta T over M plus VI. Oops, and we'll just... Um, We'll just replace now six and a half. The time is going to be 0 0.875 seconds now. If you're not familiar with milliseconds, that's um, just one thousandth of a second. Over 0 0.260 plus zero, and this gives us a new speed of 22 meters per second. Okay, and we have one last problem here, which is um, involving a graph. Okay, we're back. We just uh, wrote the quiz, if you remember. This was in the middle of class. So right now we are in class. You're all looking at me. Hello. And I am recording. So here we go. Um, this last one says, two figure skaters approach each other in a straight line. They meet hand to hand and then push off in opposite directions. They, uh, the increase and decrease of force are both linear, which produces a force time curve that is in the shape of a triangle and we want to determine the impulse for the, this interaction. So you can see to the right here we have a triangle shaped graph and what we're going to be doing is actually figuring out the impulse from a graph. We haven't done this yet but we said that impulse delta P here is equal to F delta T. Right? This is, this is what we said. Um, we had this equation up here so the impulse is equal to F delta T. Now, you can see from our graph, well, if we take the area under the graph, that is going to be F times delta T. And so that's how we can find the impulse from a graph. Graph, We just take the area under an FT graph. So in this case, we want to take the area under the graph. So we can say that the impulse here is equal to, well, we've got a triangle, so it's going to be base times height over 2. Our base is 2.5 seconds times our height of 20 newtons. And we divide that by 2. This gives us 20 times 2.5 over 2, 25 newton seconds. And that's it. That's, that's how, you, um, how you get impulse from a graph. Okay, that's the end of the lesson. Enjoy.